Well, that video blew up. <laughs> Can't stand YouTube, man. Eight hours of editing talking about the complete renovation of this reptile building and all the reptiles being in it. 2,000 views. A literally dog crap video of me sitting down for 27 minutes talking about a reptile bite. 18.5 thousand views. How's it going, folks? My name's Dakota, and I run DBCB Exotics for a full-time living. Now, most of you know me as the guy that works with these things right here, toke geckos, and my years of breeding and taming down tokes, or maybe you know me from my other gecko projects, crested geckos, gargoyles, days, or chihua. However, there are now 215 of you that know me as the dude that got nailed by my big lizard and didn't go to the doctor. I wanted to take today and talk a little bit about the aftermath. What happened now two weeks later? We're gonna show off some animals, including the Argus pair, what's going on with them, and a couple of other things. So stick around. It won't just be, be sitting there talking about a lizard bite for half an hour that 18,000 of you seem to, seem to enjoy. I swear, why do, why do I even try on YouTube anymore? I, I can't stand it. So first things first, what everyone probably wants to see right now. I'm not going to add some fluff in there so you guys have to wait. Let's check out what my hand looks like two weeks later after this bite. Two weeks later, it is looking pretty good. I'm pretty sure I can show what the hand fully looks like now on YouTube. Now that there's no uh, blood or gore and YouTube's not going to like that. But it's looking pretty good. I have some pretty good mobility with it now. I can fully clench my fist, which is very nice. This one's still a little bit stiff, but I mean, there's tons of scar tissue on my index finger, so it is gonna be a little more difficult, need a little bit more time. But I can fully, I have full mobility now, I can lift, I've started working out again, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, a bunch of good stuff, it's, it's, it's going pretty well. Now there are a few things I want to clarify in the other video that a lot of people uh, had some, uh, I think, miscontusions of what I was saying. Something I didn't go a little bit more, more in depth that I should have and I wanted to talk about it here. A lot of people saying I should have gone to the doctor, should have got stitches, this and that, and I think it was, number one, there's still people to this day. That video is two weeks old. The, the hands healed. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what, the, what you guys want me to go to the doctor for at this point, but I, I think my big mistake there was just assuming that people knew who I was, that everyone was going to click the video. Number one, I didn't expect the video to blow up. I thought it was just going to be, everyone kept DMing me on Instagram, what's with my hand, I wanted just one source everyone can flock to. I just didn't think so many people were going to flock to it. So it was it was my bad to, under, to underestimate that the video would blow up, I guess, and for everyone that would watch the video to know exactly who I am and what I do. Hey, I'm Dakota. I already said that. I've been working with animals professionally for over a decade. I've been working numerous career paths with animals, starting from stuff like dog kennels and daycares, going all the way up to hand raising exotic birds, breeding reptiles, and being a veterinary technician. Uh, so I know a thing or two about stuff, medical stuff, animal stuff, all that. Definitely not an expert, but I do know a thing or two at this point in time in my age. And I think the biggest misunderstanding for a lot of people was thinking I was just gonna wrap it in like a paper towel or something and call it good. I think a lot of people were scared I didn't really know how to take care of a wound like this and that I was just like some guy, which to be fair, it, did, it was just some guy on the video, but I am not some guy. keeping working with reptiles for somewhere around seven to eight years now and within those years you tend to gather some supplies definitely with a medical background for me helps and I knew exactly what to do to help a wound like this granted I've never had a wound this bad before but I know the basic first aid and how to treat it uh, so my basic steps were I cleaned it with chloride ripes applied uh, lidocaine for the pain and antibacterial and bacitracin for the antibacterial component as well I also put myself on a round of antibiotics to make sure that no bacterial infection would take place and kept the wound bandaged and clean for the time being until that wound fully healed. Pretty much did everything that a doctor would have done besides the stitches because I don't like stitches. That was the only thing I didn't do. Um, There's a lot of back and forth whether, I didn't know if I was right for saying animal bite shouldn't be stitched. It does sound like, I don't know, a lot of people said I was right. Some people said I should get stitches. Uh, I'm on the fence of that, but I didn't get them. Uh, you can't get them at this point. I don't think there's any point in arguing the fact or not whether I should have. 
we have that out of the way, let's go into the second most asked topic in that uh, in that video, and that's going to be how are my how is my hand after the fact? Do I still have nerve damage? Can I feel my hand? Can I move my hand? Did I lose my hand like the title suggested? As mobility goes, my hand is doing pretty good. I can pretty much do this. I can lift it straight. The index finger still needs a little more time, but I can move them. I can do this. I can lift. So watch this. Watch this. Absolutely incredible. I have most of my mobility back with my hand. Uh, as far as healing goes, I, or as f feeling, not healing, as far as feeling goes, I still can't feel the tip. Like right here, I can't feel anything, and it drives me absolutely crazy because it always feels like I have like, pretty much it always feels like you have a band-aid on it. Like there's some feeling, but it feels like there's something in the way, right? And it gets really crazy and it drives me nuts. You know like the little calluses you get right here, and I, I usually like chew them off. I have to resist the urge of chewing the finger off because I feel like I, there's just something in the way and I gotta get it off. <laughs> that may make me sound absolutely insane, but that's because, <laughs> that's because I am. I own large lizards. What did you think? Did you think I was mentally stable making these? I make YouTube videos for a living. What do you think my sanity level is? I do this, this is my job. I don't work at night, this is what I do for a living. This is how I make money. You think I'm right in the head? Okay. Last, the last thing I wanted to discuss was the monitor lizards. Do I still have them? Am I scared of them? Am I? Do I plan on getting rid of them? What is the deal, Dakota? I don't know why I added that part, because that was such a stupid thing to say, because there, I mean, there's like literally zero chance I would ever get rid of my lizards, especially after owning them for this long, growing out those little girls for two years now, when they were able to like fit in the size of, I could just like cup them like this, and now they're like this big, and I've got the big Bimson now. I, I'm not getting rid of the lizards, there's no way I'm going to get rid of them. I absolutely love them. They're one of my favorite species to work with over here. Bimson got knocked down a few steps with the bite, but he's still top five for sure. As far as fear goes with Bimson, I wouldn't really say I'm like scared or terrified of Bimson. I think I, it's more of a healthy respect for the lizard now. Uh, I definitely am not as gung-ho about reaching my hand in and getting a little... Uh, definitely I was too cocky, and uh, some of you guys mentioned that and reiterated the sentiment that I made in that video. Uh, but that was the truth of the matter. I was definitely too cocky. I have a bigger, bigger uh, healthy respect for the animal, but it's not something I'm like afraid of. Guys, come on. You really can't fear the lizard. It's not like when I went to go pair Bimson a couple of days ago to his girlfriend, I was wearing this attire, making sure that if I got bit, I wouldn't hurt nearly as bad as when I did it with wearing a t-shirt and no gloves. I mean, that would just be ridiculous if, like, this was the getup I'd wear when handling him at this point. Alright, maybe there's like a little more caution than there should be. But yeah, I still uh, I still am going to continue pursuing uh, monitor li lizard breeding and getting some baby velociraptors here at DBCB Exotics because I think that would be really, really cool. And we did actually pair the girls for the first time, or pair the boy to the girl, uh, this time this year. And let's go take a look at that so I just stop standing here for the entire length of the video. Here he is with all of his glory. This is Bimson, our big man the one that did uh, that to my finger. And then over here, we have Lilith, the female. Lilith is kind of a dick, so we don't handle her too much. Uh, a couple things to do, just a quick disclaimer. Number one, that, that uh, water dish was clean 24 hours ago. However, uh, Bimson was chasing Lilith around to get some uh, copulation going, and they made it a complete disaster. Uh, number two, this enclosure does look pretty sparse, and that's for the reason that this is only used to breed. I, I don't really want to keep anything in here. Uh, I don't want to... I'm not going for the point of, like, cohabbing my monitor lizards. This is just to kind of, like, get the job done and then uh, Bimson goes back into his very large enclosure over there. But he's still very nice and very cool. Like I said, that was just a hunger bite. There you go. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Uh. 
And as you guys can see, Bimson is still chill. He's still a happy lizard. I can still touch him and everything. He doesn't like it too, too much, but he isn't going to try to openly charge and attack me. So we did gain a lot of that trust back. I think he was just holding a grudge for the first couple of days, but he seems to have lost it. Uh, now that we've started working with him again. That is my main dude. It's pretty early in the morning. The lights probably came on like, I don't know, 45 minutes ago or something like that. So he's still like pretty slowed down, which makes me a lot calmer. It's okay, man. Just rest my hand here. Good boy. Like you just saw, I have, I still pet Bimson, I still love Bimson, and I still don't wear gloves. I know a couple of you guys are pretty spicy about me not wearing gloves, but I, I just don't do it. If it means down the road I'll get inflicted with another bite, so be it, I guess. I don't know. I'm still young. I still got, I still got the rejuvenation of a 20, late 20 year old. I, I got some time, okay? I want to talk about before I wrap this video up is addressing the Varanid community who unfortunately saw that video that I if there is anyone I didn't want that video to go to it's the Varanid community because those are the dudes that are gonna tear me a new one rightfully so but still it hurt my feelings um, there's a reason why I don't really post a lot about my monitor lizards or make like informational videos about my monitor lizards. That's some of the fact that I'm still pretty green to it. I've only been doing it for a few years now. I think this will be year two or three um, owning Argus. So I don't like talking about too much because I don't know a super heck of a lot. And if there's one thing the Varanid, the Varanid community hates, absolutely despises, it's when someone who is green to it makes videos about it. They cannot stand that. And I respect the Varanid community. I think what those guys are doing takes a lot of work, takes a lot of money, and takes a lot of passion. So I don't like stepping on toes when it comes to that community. Bearded Dragon, like Crested Gecko, I'll step all over them because, I mean, come on. But the Varanid community, that is a community I respect. There are two names I never expected to see in my comment section. It was Kevin McCurley and the dead guy. Uh, most of you guys know Kevin, but for those of you that don't know about the dead guy, he was able to captive hatch or captive produce. He, he has captive bred uh, baby crocodile monitors, which is absolutely fantastic. I, I know I know it's not like world's first, but it, it's an, a super impressive feat. It's the first time I've actually seen little CB, like fresh hatched crocodile monitors. So it's definitely a dude I have a high level of respect for. Two dudes I wicked respect, and it was unfortunate that they had to see me in this uh, embarrassing moment, I guess. I mean, I put it out in public, but... but 1,000, 2,000 views, not 18,000, man, come on. I specifically made the video badly edited, not putting a bunch of fluff and uh, f bells and whistles on it so this wouldn't happen. I guess I learned my lesson. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the reason why I don't post a lot of monitor lizard videos on YouTube. It's for that reason. I'm also housing them in grow tents, which the Varanid community absolutely despises. And to be completely honest, I'm a little embarrassed about using grow tents for monitor lizards, especially at the size they're getting. Uh, I expected to not be here anymore. I expected around this point in time I was going to be moved into an actual uh, better, bigger house with more land and there would be outdoor enclosures. However, due to... Uh, Legislation that is just hitting us harder and harder and the fact that the economy has gone through the fucking dumpster and housing market prices are at an all-time high, I have not moved and I probably won't for a little bit. So I guess I'll put this little uh, little teaser for you guys. I'm going to be building custom enclosures for these dudes. Uh, the plan is actually I'm going to build it to the shape of this area. So obviously you guys see that I'm, it kind of looks attic-y shaped. This is where the roof is. Uh, this is the upper floor. I have a bottom floor, but I don't use it right Right now so the plan is to build a wooden enclosure that is pretty much a shaped so it gives them a lot more floor space whereas right now they're in eight by fours and five by fives and ten by fours um, I want to switch that up so my plan is to make a 12 foot by eight foot floor space that then goes around that ramp so it ramps down they have an area where it almost makes like a little burrow for them which I think would be absolutely awesome and then with that we'll put the male on one side the female on the other I'll create a little hatch door that's 
that's just big enough for the female to get through. So we can open that up, the female can go inside the male, they can do whatever, she can get out if she wants to get out, and then when she's gravid, I can put her back in her own space, close the door, and then we are good to go. I think that's gonna be a lot more beneficial for the animals going forward in breeding, and I also think it will prevent Jim Miller from keeping sad reacting my posts whenever I post an Argus monitor picture. Miller. I'm sorry I put them in grow tents. I'm fixing it. Please talk to me. I want to know how you breed Arguses so well. I, I just want your help. Tips and tricks, I'm begging you. Pretty exciting stuff. I'm just waiting on the Teus to go down for brumation. We're gonna bend them and move them aside and then we'll start taking down those enclosures. Uh, Juno, my other female Argus, can go in temporary and I'm, until I start building that, it'll probably only take like a week to do fully. But very excited about that. Cool stuff. You guys can stop harping me in the comment section about using grow tents for monitors now. And yeah, I think that is the video. This will be the last video I will be making talking about my hand. If anyone asks, I'll just point you to this video or the other video. Uh, I don't think there's any need to talk about it any further. I know a few of you guys had your reservations about me making a video in the first place saying it's bad for uh. saying it's bad for the community and this doesn't isn't a good look on animals so I just hide this away and I don't necessarily agree with that sentiment. Um, while I do understand that talking anything negative about reptiles especially during this time can lead to negative side effects I do also think it's very important to show the reality of this. I mean I don't necessarily think it's the right idea to just talk about these animals in only a positive light and only say the nice things. I mean, that's YouTube in general for you. You guys really only see the good stuff. I mean, not with my channel. I kind of show you the real stuff and a lot of it's bad and failures. But for most people, that's kind of just how social media works. It's the best of the best that people want to showcase to the public. Oh well, yes, there's always a chance this could negatively impact the hobby. I also think it's a very important tool to use to demonstrate the reality of owning species when you get into these larger lizard species and how it's not all just fun and games, you know? Negative stuff can happen and it's something you guys really need to think about before pressing forward because that little, that little baby lizard's gonna fit right here. Here, that grows into a five foot plus animal that can do some serious damage if you're not careful. That is going to be the video for today. Let me know in the comment section if I missed anything and I will answer it down there. Um, if you guys didn't see the first episode of this, there's that video right there. Uh, like the video for me. Helps the, uh, the this video get pushed up and maybe the other one stops going as much because I, I just kind of want to... Not that many. I, I, the, the sentiment's there, but I looked stupid in it and I don't... <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then.